Mally Moore. I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. Hashtag Very never good. Forget. Very good. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, welcome, Happy everyone. Ni- well, early. Happy 9-11, Dustin. Yes. Tomorrow is, of course, what is it? Uh, 17 years? Jesus Christ. Fuck. Yeah, that put it into perspective, right? Um, yeah, you know what's funny is people that don't know this movie are going to think, what the fuck was that intro about? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, th- uh, I'm going to make a <laughs> lot of insensitive jokes Um, so just whole episode. <laughs> just so everyone's aware, uh, by the title of the episode, I'm sure you can tell, but we're covering uh, Remember Me from 2010 um yeah uh this like this was this kind of started out as a joke episode like oh wouldn't it be so funny like if we did that episode yeah week and we're like haha and then when it actually came time to do it i was like i don't want to watch this fucking movie (laughs) yeah um it's a weird one um but I think we're going to have a good time talking about this one. Uh, And of course, the reason we're doing it is because tomorrow will be 17 years since, of course, September 11th occurred. And if you're unfamiliar with this movie, it's a secret (laughs) 9-11 movie. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I got... uh, Jesus. So, let me just start start off. For people that are new to the show, um, what we do is myself and Mally here are filmmakers and film critics. I guess you could say on like a amateur level. Um, we like to watch movies that end badly for the characters or movies that end weird, movies that end in a fucked up manner, sad. You know, they all qualify. And uh, we like to sit around and discuss them and try to come up with a silver lining for the characters at the end of the movie, something positive that happened that might not be so surface level, something you might have to dig for. Uh, This one's pretty bleak. I mean, it's you literally end your movie with the 9-11 World Trade Center attacks. Oh, God. Um, Like, I feel like they're like, oh, fuck, how do we end this movie? Uh, 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 Terrorism. It's so bizarre. Because it comes out of fucking nowhere, dude. Even after seeing this movie, this is my second time seeing it. Even after seeing it a second time, I still don't like. I was told that the screenwriter that it was planned all along. That's how the movie would end. But and then apparently there's some foreshadowing that can like set you up for it. I don't see any of it. I in this didn't movie. catch any of that. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So man, poor Emily. Raven or whatever, she just yeah. can't catch a break with planes. <laughs> no, she cannot. Claire. Um, Claire. So yeah, I saw this movie probably... That's my Australian accent, if you're wondering. <laughs> probably like mm, the early 2010s, I would say. Just on my list of... Uh, so like when it came out? <laughs> no, it was a couple years after it came out, I think. I don't think it was exactly oh, 2010. Oh, you're speaking to like... The t- okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry, like the I thought you meant early, early decade. I was like, I think yeah. this came out in like... <laughs> no, 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 the early not decade. Not 2010, but okay. Um, and I just was just working down my list of movies to watch, and I was like, okay, I'll watch this. And I didn't know anything about it at first, didn't know it was a secret 9-11 movie. And when it got to that <laughs> that reveal, I was very upset. Fucking floored. I was angry. I was confused. I was... I felt a little dumb, to be honest, that a movie like that could get get one over on me. Um, on this rewatch, not as angry, obviously, because I can see it coming. Of course. Um, I still don't know how I feel about it. I'm I'm on the fence. I mean, let's just. I mean, I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna throw a silver lighting out right now. Oh god! At least nine <laughs> eleven didn't actually happen. Right. This is this is the work of. It's it's bizarre that it's a work of fiction and yet simultaneously not. I know, man. <laughs> it's um, like nine eleven's like how people always remember fucking Sinbad being in like a genie movie. Kazam, Didn't Shazam, happen. yeah, 
Yeah. Bernstein Same Bears. Same with 9-11. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mally, what was your hmm. first experience uh, like watching this movie? Did you? This wasn't your first time, right? No, I watched this. Uh, so one of my ex-girlfriends was watching this, and I was like, it's one of those situations where I was like, I don't want to watch this, but I don't have a fucking choice. Yeah. So I was watching it, and I was like, okay, this movie's shit. Um, and then it got to the ending. I was like, this movie's fucking crazy. <laughs> like, dude, it just... <laughs> Like, let's be honest, there's nothing interesting, or, okay, actually, there's one interesting thing. This is a well-shot movie, I'm not gonna lie. It's, yeah. It looks good. Like, the cinematography yeah. is not bad. But everything else about this movie is fucking garbage. Yeah. And I just didn't, like, you know, I, I didn't give a shit about any of the characters. No one mattered to me. But yeah. then that ending was just like, oh, we know you don't care. <laughs> we're gonna make you care um, i um and i won't say it worked mm-hmm. but i was just like what the fuck uh, there's i think i the only character i truly care about is the the little sister i feel like she gets oh you mean a, a the real only character <laughs> yeah the, uh, she gets like a real rough go in this entire movie <laughs> she might have it worse than any of she them does man dude they cut her hair i know uh, I got I want to, I got a, something to say about that too when we get there. But uh, let's talk some backstory. So as we mentioned, of course, titles remember me. Years twenty ten. Director is Alan Coulter, starring some familiar faces: Robert Pattinson, uh, Emile de Rivine, who you would know from Lost as Claire, Claire. Uh, Chris Cooper, who plays her father, uh, Lena Olin. Uh, I don't know who that is. Tate uh, Ellington, who's the douchebag friend. Yeah. Ruby Jarens, who I That's think is a little daughter, girl. Or, yeah. yeah, the little girl. Yeah. And Pierce Brosnan uh, <laughs> as their father. Yeah. What's Pierce Brosnan doing in this fucking movie? I have no clue, but I got to tell you, I like his character more this time than on the initial watch. Okay, like, there are there are characters in this movie who I could feel like, if you give the, gave this script to someone else to rewrite. Mm-hmm. There's a movie in there. Yeah. Yeah, there's like, definitely a movie I in like here somewhere. Parts of Pierce Brodden's character I like. Um Caroline, I think, is the little girl's name. Yes. Um, she's fucking great. Um I will defend Robert Patterson. I think he's a pretty good actor. Like yes. if you take if you take him out of the Twilight and all that shit. Yeah. Like what's that fucking one movie he's in where he's just in a limo for the entire movie? Oh, I don't know. Um God, it's I'll look it up as I talk. Um, I like him in Good Time a lot. I thought yeah, he was a brilliant I haven't seen Good Time. That yet, and I want to. So it's really good. Fucking bad. P- potential episode for this show. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, uh, Cosmopolis is the movie I'm thinking Cosmopolis. of. Cosmopolis. Okay. I yeah, don't think I've seen it's that. It's a Cronenberg flick. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's like him, like fucking. Um, he's like this dude. Like the movie sets out like. He gets in a limo to go get a haircut. He's like a billionaire. Um, And, like, the world just starts going crazy outside. Okay. And it's just him pretty much cruising through Manhattan in this limo. I like the sound of that. It's an interesting watch. I uh, recommend. Fucking dude. uh, What's his name? Paul Giamatti's in it. So is uh, (laughs) Kevin Durand, other Lost alum there. All right. Um, Fucking Jay Baruchel. Like, it's a wicked fucking flick. I might have to put that on the um, list. So he's good in that. And apparently, uh, uh, Good Time's awesome. And remember yeah. me? Shit. Yeah. Uh, last thing I want to say is it currently sits at a 27% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> probably uh, probably not coming out of that slump anytime soon. This is not a very no. popular movie. And the ones that do know of it only know about it because it's a secret 9-11 movie. Because of the fucking ending. Yeah. Um, um, and this, this movie came out like in the... Like... Just the full fucking Twilight. I think it came out in between like the I'm last look that two up. or I'm gonna in look the that middle. Up. Like it, I think it came out a right. Like it, it had was, to have been because I actually got drugged to see. Hang on, I'm looking it up now. Yeah, I got drugged um, to the theater to see not the last Twilight, but the one before. Okay, it, it came out the same year as the second one. 
Yeah, it looks like... No, wait. Hang on. How many of those fucking movies were there? There was like six or seven. Hang it on. came out literally Twilight, in between New, New Moon, Moon and Eclipse. Eclipse. Breaking... There's five of those fucking movies? Yeah. Holy so it came shit. out between the third and fourth, or second and third. Second and third. Oh, yeah. he was also fucking great in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Yes. That's yeah, one of my least favorite good. adaptations of the Harry Potter novels. That's one of my favorite movies <laughs> of really? the Harry Potter movies. Yeah, it's probably like my number two. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I love it. I don't um, know. I don't know if I can back that. Um. Anyway... Also, yeah. Cosmopolis came out in between the last two. Anyway, right on. Um, yeah, which is funny because he sucks. Yeah, he's come out and said too, like that he hated the Twilight movies and that he hated that time in his career. But then he does movies like this, and it's like, mm, I don't know, man. I mean, you had a rough start, but you've you've definitely come back around. Yeah, I think his career is on the rise now. I think Good Time was a great step in the yeah, right I direction. Think, I think he's. I think he's finding his. Yeah. His uh, flow, if you will. He's like what Shia LaBeouf's trying to do, like getting really deep into like this method acting and really finding these like really juicy roles like Good Time. But, I mean, can we He's talk about Shia LaBeouf real quick? paper bag on his head. That man... Re- do we like, have to talk about Shia LaBeouf? Because the fucking I just, comparisons I get to him on a daily basis annoy <laughs> the fuck out of me. I just want to say he ripped a tooth out to be in Fury. Like he literally he also cut his face <laughs> over the course of a few months to get that little scar in his face. Yeah, it's it's like little... every two days he would cut it again just to make sure Jesus. he had that scar. Jesus, man. I mean, Fury is a good movie, but not you don't remember it for Shia LaBeouf. Um, let's get no, into. You remember for Brad Pitt's haircut? I know, right? Which is literally what my hair looks like right now. <laughs> let's get into the trailer. Gandhi said that whatever you do in life will be insignificant. But it's very important that you do it. Officer, those two were just trying to stop it. Go home. Hey, 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 go. I tend to agree with the first part. You could do worse than have a father who bails you out of jail. I don't want to be bailed out of anything. Why do you think Dad doesn't want to spend time with me? She knows I'll take care of her. That's all there is, Tyler. That's all there is? Not enough. You know you can't smoke in here. Why why do you have an ashtray? It's a bowl. It completes the room. I guess it was just here to tease me. You've been a ghost past couple weeks, all right? You don't want to go out anymore. I had enough of this introvert stuff, okay? I'm ready to set an intervention here. He has got a daughter. Who's got a daughter? The cop that busted your face all up. He's got a daughter. I know her. She's in my global politics class. Go get her. I, I don't date sociology majors. Lucky for you, I'm I'm undecided. About what? Everything. What desserts do you have? I have my dessert first. What is that? This is our appetizer. That's why chicks dig you, man. They love this freaky poetic crap. Charles, it's your son. Yeah, I was wondering if you wanted to have dinner. How many? Three. He can stand me up, but he can't stand you up. You're gonna take care of nothing! You're responsible for no one! You're a kid! I'm going out. Who are you going with? A boy from school. You're kind of lost, aren't you? You think you know me. You don't. My dad just doesn't know what's going on right now. What's going on right now? been trying to tell me something make your yours forever and i'm working on the forever part um they don't mention 9-11 fucking once that's like the only <laughs> note i have is like they really <laughs> were really trying to keep this ending They're like low key. Oh guys we got this ending don't show it we yeah. got it I'm surprised um, it drew as much attention to the box office as it did. I don't know if I mentioned, but it had a budget of $16 million and managed to gross $56 million worldwide. Fucking what? Really? It must have just been like the teenage, uh, like the Robert Pattinson kind of fans. Because I don't think this movie really holds much weight if you 
no, replace like him. It's literally, with if you else? take the nine eleven out of it all, yeah, um, it's just a. Fucking, it's a pretty forgettable movie. Yeah, like I wouldn't Which remember this movie I feel if it like, wasn't. I feel like the title of this movie is actually the movie itself speaking <laughs> to the audience, like begging. Like, don't forget, like, remember me. Yeah, don't forget. <laughs> they real oh bold move, bold move. They should have called this movie Never Forget. Yeah, that would have been too on the nose, though. Maybe uh, that could have been the tagline. Remember me, would never have forget. Been <laughs> fucking yeah. No, I mean, going into it, you would have no fucking idea. Yeah. No, the tagline was like, "What is it? Live in the moments." That's fucking stupid. Yeah, so many missed opportunity for that. Um, so many missed opportunities. Let's. I want to get into this movie because I want to talk about why the plot of this movie even happens, because. As far as I can tell, Tyler's friend, I can't remember his name, wants him to fuck a classmate of his to get back at her father, who is the cop that rightfully arrested Tyler for putting his hands on him. Yes. And that's it. Right? Yeah. Like, it's he's basically saying, you should revenge fuck this dude's daughter to get back at him? Like, I don't... <laughs> What's the point of that of this movie? I don't. Uh, More importantly, why is this movie two hours long? Right, this fucking dragged. Ah, uh, yeah. Like I started watching this last night. Mm-hmm. Couldn't finish it. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm, uh, fuck. And I finished it this morning. Yeah. And uh, God, I rewatched it back to back with Hereditary last week to get get uh get it out of the way and man fucking combination man did it drag on and on it and goes on forever dude yeah. well let's get into the the beginning the cold open um it's claire as a little girl watching get witnessing her uh his mother her mother get yeah. robbed and shot and murdered mm-hmm. on the at a brooklyn train station uh, my question about this robbery is why shoot the mom? Because then how else would she grow up to be Batman? <laughs> You've already stolen the woman's purse as the robber. You've obviously never mugged anyone. I, I'm guessing there were no witnesses on this train either, which is kind of surprising considering it's Brooklyn. I can't imagine. You would think. Yeah. Uh, I also pulled this from uh, INDB. Uh, in the very first scene... After grabbing the purse from the woman, the two robbers board the subway train and the doors close for departure, right? To go to the next stop. But then somehow the doors open again so that he has an opportunity to shoot her. But I don't know if you've ever been on a subway, Mally, but or a monorail, but once the doors are closed, there's not uh, really a way to open them. Uh, not unless, true. Not true. Please set me straight then. <laughs> if so... But you can do it with. But you would alert the the in, the from conductor. From living in Chicago for years, I've been on many a trains. If someone and like all those doors are kind of synchronized, so mm-hmm. if someone on like down on another end got maybe like, I don't know, was standing in front of the door when it closed, mm-hmm. like they bounce back open, so right. all the doors open up. So I'm thinking someone. Like two cars down, yeah. got their fucking shoe stuck in the door. It's like ah shit, and because of that <laughs> asshole, the mom got shot. But it's just so weird because like the doors are. Why closed. am I trying to defend this stupid <laughs> fucking movie? The doors are closed, and then like ten seconds later, they just spring back open and shoot. Yeah, <laughs> I, I doesn't tried it, to explain. I got nothing to be. Doesn't it, it, it it's, alert it's, the conductor that it's been o- the doors have been opened? Like that would set off some red flags right there, right? I mean, we don't. Do they ever say if they got caught? I don't think they do. Oh, well, let's assume they got caught. I don't know. Their right. dad's a cop. He probably, I don't know, maybe he went full fucking Death Wish, and that's that's the movie I want to see. <laughs> that's Death Sentence if you want to watch a movie like that. <laughs> well, that's um, Death Wish. That too. Death, um, death Sentence. They're all the same book series. And <laughs> um, 9-11. Yeah, so we start this movie off with kind of like this pretentious voiceover from Tyler saying... Uh, it's, it, I know the only reason I wrote it down is because it had a connection with another movie we've done on the show. But he says, Gandhi said that whatever you do in life will be insignificant, but it is very important that you do it. 
I agree with the first part. And I was mm-hmm. after he said that, I was like, this sounds very familiar to another quote we've done on the show. Uh, that Somerset says, Morgan Freeman's character in Seven, at the very end of the movie, yep. he says, Earning, Ernest Hemingway once wrote, the world is a fine place and worth fighting, fighting for. I agree with the second part. Yep. And I like that. Maybe this was building up a cinematic universe. Remember <laughs> me in Seven. I like that these movies have nothing to do with each other, but nothing. it's inter- it's interesting that Somerset takes the more optimistic approach and Tyler's character takes the more negative approach like right out the gate. Like, yeah, this is a moody fucking film, Dustin. You got to let him know. But it's so weird that this movie gets has to be moodier than 7, which is like the ultimate moody movie. <laughs> um they're not there's no comparison there. I just thought it was interesting, but did you know that this movie was on the 2008 blacklist um what i find that fascinating that anyone could read Was the script like and be like slow year <laughs> i have no idea man but that's bananas to me Well, i mean i don't know i haven't read the fucking maybe the script is good i doubt it mm, I, I can't but imagine it maybe good. um why do i keep trying to defend this movie i think tyler's what a piece I, of shit what? I woke up. We- oh no, he's a <laughs> shitty. I think shitty main character. Most most characters like, in this movie are pieces of shit. <laughs> like okay, this goes. I was actually having a conversation with a buddy of mine because a mutual friend of ours sent us the script, and we keep like it's really good, but we don't like like the main character. It's kind of an asshole. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know. In that particular script, it's not bad, but this movie, like, Tyler, besides the fact that he's, like, chill with his younger sister, mm-hmm. the motherfucker has no redeemable qualities. No, I... He's fucking hot-headed. Yeah. He's a douche. Uh, he's, he's like your typical college freshman that's, like, he, they just took philosophy for the first time, and they think the, they fucking know the intricacies of humankind like he thinks he knows everything Mm -hmm. i do like the scenes with his sister i think those are the only times that i actually genuinely care about his character and i think he has redeemable qualities there but there's there's no chemistry between him and Allie. no there's no chemistry between him between anybody in this film except maybe robert pattinson and the little sister that's like the only scenes i really care about but it's it's just funny because Tyler's a piece of shit. His friend sucks. The dad sucks. Not Pierce Brosnan, uh, Chris Cooper. Like, everyone just kind of sucks, can, man. Chris Cooper, man. That guy can't catch a break. No, but I don't know, man. I just I, I found it difficult on this rewatch to latch onto anybody that I gave a shit about, except for the little sister. Um, so, for anyone listening, I just finished my coffee. So I'm going to progressively get more and more irritable as this episode goes on. Do you think Robert Pattinson hates these kind of roles? Because I know he's... I mean, he did. you did quote him earlier saying, I hate... He hated Twilight. Twilight. He, didn't you say his career at that time? Because this came out in the middle of that fucking shit. Yeah, but I'm wondering, like, why take the roles in if you hate these romantic dramas? I mean, I know you got to get work. money is dope. Twilight, I get. I get why you do Twilight. It's five or six movies. It's a paycheck. It's easy to get your name out there. But it could also make or break your career because, like, you know, people can do those kind of movies and then you never hear from them again. Like, uh, yeah, or you could go the fu- or you could be like, have a fucking reconnaissance. Yeah, I, get- I mean, like, and fucking crush it. Like, on and the as comparison, Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson have done pretty well getting away from the Harry Potter thing, but when's the last time you saw Rupert Grant in a movie? Maybe once or twice? Uh, Dude, he's fucking chilling. He fucking took his Harry Potter money, bought a fucking ice cream truck, and is cruising <laughs> around London in it. I don't know. I, I just feel like Robert Pattinson, he hated doing movies like this, and I just didn't understand why he would continue to do them. I guess maybe money or just... Because money is dope. Yeah. <laughs> Let me... All right, Dustin, you're an editor, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you only edit rad shit? Yeah. <laughs> fuck I otherwise I, I wouldn't do it damn it never mind uh, uh good good try though yeah I, I thought I had something going there Shit. uh what do you think happened between Tyler and Pierce Bro like Robert Pattinson and Pierce Brosnan I mean there's clearly something to do with the brother I know it's mentioned 
the brother the, killed himself. Yeah, the brother hung himself. But has ever mentioned why? I, blames the other. Yeah, uh, Tyler blames the dad for his brother hanging himself. But it's never mentioned why, right? Um, is I'm it just because he thinks he's a piece of shit? Al Qaeda. <laughs> he was captured by Al Qaeda. Um, there is something noteworthy here. Um, I, have you heard about the original script? No, no. For this movie. Okay. I don't know how factual this is, but it does make sense for this is kind this of movie. Is this the one that was on the blacklist? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming so. This is from okay. Reddit that I saw this. Um, oh God. Bless up, Reddit. Shout who knows? If, who knows if this is accurate, but it may, for me, it sounds true based on how this movie is. Okay. Um, this gives a little more backstory on the I'm brother. I'm listening. Uh, in the original script, the script makes you believe that 9-11 has already happened because Robert Pattinson's brother, they kind of mentioned he died in the World Trade Center attacks years and years ago. He me oh, the other one. Yeah, that's kind of the bait and switch. It says that his character is even seen in a framed picture uh, at the World Trade Center in Tyler's dorm. And then at the end of the movie, Pattinson reveals that the brother died in the 93 attack and then we get the ending we got, the camera zooming out to show So that you're telling me that fucking Pierce Brosnan had two kids die in 9-11 terrorist right. attacks? <laughs> in World Trade Center attacks, and yeah. Are you... F- oh, what? Stay away from that fucking building, bro. Like, I know. Work somewhere else. Well, Move that was in the original offices. script. That's in the original script. I, it gives you kind of an, a backstory on why the how the brother died, but in this one, they just say he hung himself, and they kind of imply that it's somehow Pierce Brosnan's fault. But... I don't know. He they never really get into it. From the World Trade Center. <laughs> I feel like we kind of need to know a little bit about that to really understand to why Tyler hates his. It? Yeah, to why under, to understand why Tyler hates his dad so much. Yeah, like I, I haven't under like the whole movie. I was like, why do they hate him so much? Well, that was me on the initial watch. Like when I first saw this movie, I was like, yeah, Pierce Brosnan, you're a piece of shit. You don't give a shit about your kids. On this rewatch, I th- kind of thought he was in the right most of the time. <laughs> like. Sure, sure, he could always, you know, spend more time with his kids and show them that he cares. But yeah, he's also apparently like a very high up in some kind of Fortune 500 type company. Like the kids are well, like Tyler doesn't have to pay for rent apparently, and apparently he's not even in class. He just goes to some college and sits yeah, in on a class audits, he's not enrolled yeah, in. He literally audits classes at uh, what is it, NYU? Which like. Pretty fucking cushy gig. Yeah, pretty cushy fucking gig, dude. You don't have to worry about anything like rent and food, and you don't have to. Your parents aren't like telling you either have to get a job or be in school. Like it's pretty fucking nice gig you got there. I I wouldn't complain too much about your dad not like like for example the dinner the birthday dinner scene when he shows up a little late and the whole time Robert Patton's on edge. It's like yeah, but he showed up. He even gets a phone call in the middle, and then he tells him. You know, he comes right back to the table. Like it's he's he's doing a pretty damn good job, I think. Yeah, like fuck off. Like I mean, he Again, at least this made is it. Why Tyler fucking sucks. And he bails him out of jail like three times. <laughs> yeah, like dude, Tyler stays getting arrested. And then Tyler like smokes in the lobby when it's clearly a non-smoking area. He bursts into the boardroom during that meeting. It's like, dude, you're being a little dramatic. You're being a little baby. Like. If you really want to take it up with your dad, sit down and have a normal conversation. Don't just be fucking lashing out from zero right. to ten. I don't know. I I totally sided with Pierce Brosnan's character on this rewatch. But it's so interesting because I think the movie is trying to tell me that the moral of the story is that dads suck. Because Chris Cooper's a piece of shit in the movie. They're trying to make me think Pierce Brosnan's a piece of shit. And, yeah. And then I guess they're also trying to tell me cops suck because... Chris Cooper is one, and he clearly abuses his power multiple times. I don't know what the movie's trying to tell me. <laughs> um, jet fuel can't melt steel. Uh, That's yeah. what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> um, also, we- fun fact: my 9/11 conspiracy theory uh, documentary drinking game doesn't work on this movie. <laughs> um, I was really hoping it would. Can we, can we talk about scenes we do like? Like, is there one that you 
the part at the end where it cuts to the credits that part was dope <laughs> that part was that, there that are, got me that got me i was there, almost in tears <laughs> there are two scenes that i actually genuinely like in this movie one of them being that boardroom scene i think that might be the best scene in the movie because i don't think there's any winner or loser in that scene but you get, it's good because you get to see tyler defending his sister yeah. um and then you also get Pierce Brosnan explaining why he is like he is, or at least it's like putting Tyler in his place. And I like that they have that reoccurring joke with the people trying to leave, and he keeps telling them to sit down. <laughs> um, I don't know. That was the only scene I actually gave a shit about. Other than maybe, again, where Tyler's being a piece of shit, but I kind of think it's awesome when he takes his little sister into class for the first time after she had her hair cut like making fun of her hair and he like whips that girl's desk around <laughs> yeah like that mother goes zero like i like, like a that's the one year old I like because it's so fucking ridiculous yeah it's pretty and then he just throws that fire extinguisher out the window like through the fucking glass door and then they just cut to him in jail like it's pretty great <laughs> I don't know. It's I, so silly. It makes me think of the scene in Hot Rod where uh, Rod throws the projector out the the glass window in the auditorium. It's just like so. <laughs> like why? <laughs> Dude, um, it's fucking. Oh my god. So uh, we're talking about remember me. We're talking about September 11th. Uh, something we're not talking about though, Mally, is uh, winning free stuff. So. True. You like winning free stuff, right? I mean, who yeah, doesn't? Although you keep telling me I'm not allowed to win these, so yeah, you're not allowed to. So for those who are allowed to, those loyal listeners right now that have made it this far into the episode, you can go right now if you want to Reddit.com/r/SilverLiningsPlaylist. Find the official discussion thread for this movie, Remember Me, which should be pinned at the top if you're listening to this the week it drops. And in that official discussion thread, you can leave this contest code I'm about to give you as a comment. For a chance to win free stuff from us. That's it. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to sign up for anything. Just put this contest code in. We'll randomly select a winner and get in touch with you. And that contest code is... I've planted my flag in every continent. Just like the annoying, sexist, piece of shit friend in this movie. Oy. You can plant your flag in the comment section for a chance to win free stuff from us. I feel like they could have given that little girl a better haircut. Because they could have given her like a pixie cut or something, but she looks like a goddamn anime character here. Like the schoolgirl anime characters where they give them like kind of bowl cuts, kind of. It's real weird. I mean, <laughs> do what you can, I guess. Yeah. Um, <sighs> the only thing I care to talk about really is this ending, but I'm trying to think if there's anything else like, I want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I'm struggling to think of something else in the movie that doesn't have to do with the end that we well, can talk. This is going to be a short episode. Like, do, you, do we care about the romance between Robert Pattinson and Amelia DeRaven? Because um, I, I, I like her in this movie. I I love Emily DeRaven. Like, fucking Lost, yeah. fucking Brick. Like, her singing awesome. um, her singing La Mer in Lost is so fucking good. Mm. Uh, but yeah, and this—I mean, I like her in this movie. We are everybody. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but oh. yeah, man, like, fuck! It just dawned on me that the little girl after her haircut really just kind of looks like Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because like, of the school uniform and shit. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. I don't have really have much else to say about this movie. I think it's kind of forgettable, uh, other than the ending and. Uh-huh. Uh, um, I don't really, I don't care about the romance stories. I don't care about Amelia Day Raven and Chris Cooper's relationship. I the only thing I kind of care about is Tyler and his dad and Tyler and don't his sister. Don't care about any of it. Yeah, I don't care about the friend. I think the friend is the that fucking goatee wearing douche like that. Er, it's got such an early two thousands kind of feel to it, like uh, that butterfly effect kind of grungy. Oh, I I hate it. I hated movies from this era that like. The friends in these movies were always sexist pieces of shit. Always. All they cared about was getting laid. All they cared about was drinking. It was just so annoying. But at the same time, I like the little sister character, but I also think they're trying way too hard to make her way smarter than a 
person her age should be. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's kind of unrealistic, like her vocabulary and everything. Um, yeah, that's becoming like a big trope in a lot of movies with like the little kid who's like super way fucking too smart, fucking smart. Yeah, I think the first time I ever really noticed it was The Ring. Yeah, Aiden. Yeah, because I remember that kid just being like a goddamn genius. Yeah, it. I think that's what made uh, this it remake that we got last year so enjoyable because like the kids were authentic, but they weren't over the top with like being way too smart for their own good right, or, right. or way too dumb for their own good. Um, I would. I like. I like that in my movies about you know kids like coming of age tales and stuff. Um, before we get to the actual ending, uh, we should talk about the surprise factor in it and i want to know what you think about would this film be better or worse without that ending um because i don't don't know if it think the movie would be affected at all except that less people would watch it out of curiosity that's that's my (laughs) thing i don't think this movie i think this movie would be easily forgotten which is ironic considering the title Uh, if that ending uh, was hashtag never forget if that ending wasn't there um, but at the same time, I've seen mixed reviews, uh, and criticism about the ending because, you know, the, the, the director says that it's foreshadowed throughout the movie on this rewatch. I didn't get Where? anything. Where is it foreshadowed? The only thing the I, one time I can see any semblance of that is when he's doing his fucking hardcore freak out in the classroom. Half of the word September is written on the board. <laughs> well, that's it. The it only says, like, thing Thursday, September. Yeah. That's the only it. thing I noticed was when they one time when he goes to his dad's office, they mention what floor he's on, but that's really it. Like they mention that's high up. That's it. Oh, he's in a tall building. Yeah, oh, in New York. Oh, nine eleven. Yeah, in New York. <laughs> Uh, I, like I said, I remember the first time I saw this movie, it made me angry because of how it felt cheap. It felt tacked on, even though the author swears it was, you know, the intent from the beginning. This time, I still think it's kind of cheap, but... It's still just... It comes... I'm sorry. It comes out of fucking nowhere. It's... Yeah. They don't give you any kind of foreshadowing. They don't give like, you any kind of, like, heads what you, up. The, or, the original thing with the brother, if that had been in there, yeah. I would have fucking bought into this so hard. Yeah. It is a little ridiculous that... Pierce Brosnan has two sons die in World Trade Center attacks, but like, yeah, what the fuck ever? I'll buy into it. Like, set it up, and I'm in for it. Yeah, but this comes out of fucking nowhere. And on this rewatch, you know, I wasn't as angry because I don't think it mattered. I don't think I cared because you, I don't care about the characters. I think they try too hard to make these characters like, in like, I don't know. Do you know what upset me the most? Hmm. How many fucking fade to blacks there were? There are a lot of fade to black in the movie. Damn. And also, can we talk about all right. Can we talk about Pierce Brosnan's reaction? Do oh during the uh the when the actual trade centers get hit? Yeah. Yeah, that's on my is notes it too. Does he just not react at all? I I don't understand his reaction. I don't I don't get, get it. I don't get like, what his cuz he kind of smiles is falling down. Your son's there and you're just he kind of has a smile. I wouldn't call it a smile, just almost like a, huh. Or like he's just in disbelief, yeah. Just like, huh, shit. Can we uh, talk Can we talk about the ending, the ending montage? I feel like it's a bit heavy-handed, for my taste. Um, like, when they show... Yeah, fucking think. When they show uh, Emil, Amelia, and she's like... Whenever uh, they run out of the up the stairs. They run up on the roof to see, and there's yeah. just ashes falling on top of her as she's crying. I'm like, that's a little... Oh, yeah. And oh, like, that's a little much, man. Ash, like... And the thing that bothers me is it shows every... Like, it's the shot of them and the shot of her dad. Like, the angle from which they're looking up, you would think they're right next to the fucking building. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, they should, you shouldn't, it, this should not be clear at all. They should be fucking covered in shit. Well, it's weird because, like, like they it's sh- just a couple sprinkles of ash. Yeah. No, that place was a fucking war zone when yeah. that happened. Like, that shit, like, there were so many people injured just from debris and the yeah. inhalation of dust and rubble and shit, like... 
what the? F- that pissed me off again. I'm saying this as if it actually happened. <laughs> it still confuses me because like the cop is still a fucking dick at the end of all this. Like he never has a moment of like. Yeah, but now he's a fucking hero, Dustin. That's the thing. Like they show him and his daughter hugging at the end. I'm like, yeah, but he's still a fucking asshole. I don't care that just because 9 11 happened, that doesn't redeem him as Tragedy a cop. Tragedy brings us together. I I don't know. Um, where were you on September 11th? That's a good question. I remember I know exactly where ex- I was. Ex- I know exactly where I was. I was uh, actually I was actually late to school that day. Nice. And I remember what I was wearing. I had this like green sweater on. Uh, Sick. Sick. I was in fifth grade. I was walking. Always forget I'm older than you. Yeah, I was. It was weird because my elementary school had like a college campus kind of layout. Like it wasn't one building. It was like separate buildings that had like pathways between them. And I, I didn't was, know you grew up rich. <laughs> I well, it, trust me, I didn't. I was walking. <laughs> I was walking to class. I remember being late, but I also remember being confused because like no one was out. Like everyone was like in class, which it wasn't. In the like in the middle of like switching classes, you know, like at the end of mm-hmm. a period. But I thought it was odd that like the campus seemed dead. And I walk to class and I get in class and everyone's huddled around the TV. And, and where what state was this and where was this? I was in Alabama. Okay. Uh yeah, fifth grade. And, you know, I walk in, ask what's going on. People say, uh, the World Trade Center got hit by a plane, and I was like, The what? Because I had no idea what the fuck the World Trade Centers were. And we actually watched it the entire thing and then you know the pentagon thing happened and we watched that too i didn't really understand it at the time because i was so young i was only like 10 yeah i was 10 and i didn't know what the world trade centers were i barely knew what the pentagon was really um i didn't realize how big of a deal it was until like the next day when that's all anyone could talk about and everything where were you at i was in seventh grade um i was walking from homeroom which is our first period to second period which was banned for me playing the trumpet yeah and like i was just like walking and like everyone's kind of like running around like freaking out like oh did you hear like fucking blah 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 and i was like what yeah and then i got to second period and like, <clears throat> i start opening my trumpet and they're like what are you doing i'm like what they're like we're not doing that today i was like okay cool. yeah Tight. yeah and like I, I walk out of because we had like a little room before you got into the classroom where all the instruments were. Yeah. And so like I put it back on the shelf, walk into the room, and everyone's just like sitting in the chairs, like watching the TV, and the teachers just like sitting on the desk. I think his name was Mr. Schaefer. He smoked a lot of weed, <laughs> um, but he was just like you know mouth covered to watching the TV, and like we were that was we were there when the attack on the Pentagon happened too. And you were in seventh grade. No, I'm sorry, Indiana. I was in North Vernon, Indiana. Indiana. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, it's... again, us like like none of it happened, but still, <laughs> it's it was weird because like when that happened, it was it didn't have as much an impact on me as when I was in high school. Like four or five years later when I was in ninth or tenth grade. And I the city I grew up in uh was only about forty five minutes away from Fort Benning, which is the biggest military base in the States. Mm-hmm. And we were in, you know, ninth or tenth grade. I was in my history class and we were like reviewing like what happened during September eleventh, like Bush's reaction, uh, what happened the following days after, how long it took for us to declare war and everything. And she brought up Fort Benning and she was like, you know, if you don't, because this is before we had captured Bin Laden. She was like, if you don't think Bin Laden has looked at a map of Fort Benning already, he's like, you're, she's like, you're out of your mind. She goes, he's, he clearly knows exactly where Fort Benning is. He knows where this city is. And I was like, dude, don't fucking tell me that. That's terrifying. Yeah, that's like, a little fucked up. Like, she was like, like dead ass, like serious about it too. So like, yeah, guys, New York, Washington, D.C., fucking alabama yeah he's coming for he's, us he's ready like <laughs> it was pretty terrifying uh but yeah uh back 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 to the movie though i wanted to ask um yes. would this movie be better if that was the most en- <laughs> sorry <laughs> discussing where we were is the most engaged i've been this entire episode <laughs> would because I, I like i said i feel like the ending montage is a bit heavy-handed for me would it be better if no 
We get that reveal <laughs> shot of the towers with Tyler on it. I still think that's an impressive shot. I think it's yeah, pretty honestly, awesome. In the movie right there. That's what I was going to say. Do we cut to, like, because they do a real good job with the sound design, like showing you the sounds of New York life, and then they just cut to black. I'm wondering if you do that and then maybe have Tyler's monologue over black, if that would be better. Because I feel like the, I, I, I certainly don't need the shot of the family at Tyler's grave at the end of it. No. I, I we feel did like, it. Yeah. He died. Yeah, I don't need it to be told that he died. That yeah, he... no. Everything after that cut to black is just excessive. Yeah. But would it be as impactful? Like, do you think it would be a better movie? Or do you think it would just be at the same level where it is now? Because uh, that would be a real fuck you to the audience. Like, if they just cut to black. Rock and roll <laughs> fucking ending is what it would be. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, I have a deep-seated love for rock and roll fucking endings. <laughs> and that's like fucking just, all right, here's how it goes. You fucking, you, you come out from Robert Pattinson to reveal the towers. As you cut to black, fucking young men dead by the black angels kicks in. Oh my God. It's like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like that's fucking, that's the, that's the movie done. You don't need anything else. We get it. Yeah, I don't. I I don't know how to fix this movie. I'm writing that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to fix this movie. I think maybe Actually, the best. You're an editor. Can you edit that for me? <laughs> yeah. I Just think the take best the ending of Remember Me. <laughs> I think the best you can do. I think the best you can do with this movie is to cut it to black after the reveal, and then maybe put Tyler's monologue over the end. Which I I don't even really like his monologue that much. I still feel like it's no, little it's masturbatory, and stupid. Yeah. Um, Again, it's that like fucking psychology fuck or philosophy one hundred and one shit. Yeah. Um. You know, I, there have I, I I I don't know how this movie looks in the eyes of someone who was involved in nine eleven, like lost someone or was directly impacted by it. But my I remember room, my roommate's father mm -hmm. um was one of the first responders. Yeah. Uh, let me get back to you on that. Yeah, I would. I'd be curious I kinda, to, I'm to find curious out if he's ever seen it. I'd be curious to find out what they think about it. But I remember, like, like Roger Ebert gave it three out of four stars and said, <laughs> "What?" Yeah, and said that like he liked that it gave the victims of nine eleven like they're not just like, for me and you in particular. Like we weren't involved at all. I don't think you lost anybody during nine eleven. I certainly didn't. Not that I'm uh, aware of. And it's kind of hard to put faces to those people, but like. I guess his his criticism was like he thinks that it puts a face to those people and lets you know oh they were you know more than just statistics they were real people that re lived real lives that had real problems and it was all you know suddenly ended. Um, yeah, but it's also just fucking like I feel like it could be could be done better. Using this tragedy to fucking try to get you to feel for their shitty characters. Yeah. Well, I mean, like. I guess that's a good question. How does this compare to like other nine eleven movies? Like, what's the one? Uh, there's the the one called World Trade Center. Isn't that by like Oliver Stone with uh, yes, yeah, Nicholas yeah, Nicholas Cage? Nick Cage. I haven't seen it. Uh, I did I see saw it a long time ago. I did see that but other one, that um, Flight, whatever it was called. Oh, I didn't see that one. The one about the people actually on the plane as it's happening. Flight United ninety. United ninety seven. I thought it was 93. 93? You, 90, 93, you're right. I did see that one. That one's actually pretty good. And I feel like that definitely makes me feel more for the characters than this movie does. Do they know where that plane was headed, by the way? Uh, Like the actual flight? Um, well, no, where they were hijacking it to. Yeah, like where, they, like where the flight was supposed to be going, right? Is that well, what you mean? Weren't they like hijacking it and going to fly it into something else? I'm no, I think, I think it was... I think there was one aimed at the White House at, oh. at one point. But I think this one, if I'm not mistaken, didn't you 1993 leave from JFK and then they turned it around and went back? I don't know. You saw the movie. <laughs> I, I, did. I saw it when it like first came out. I do not remember. Um, <laughs> but I think that movie does. I remember that movie being a lot more impactful and made me feel for the characters way more and the victims way more than this movie does. Because I feel like this movie doesn't. I feel like if your goal is to put Matter. a face to the victims of 
don't center it around a teenage angsty romance that isn't even a romance. It's a revenge fuck movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Um, that's all. That's all I got to say about Remember Me. I'm. I, I guess would you, would you recommend it? No. <laughs> I say maybe once. If you've never seen it, maybe give it a watch. Just I'll, so you can... Uh, yeah, okay. I'll, but I'll then again, like, actually, I don't like, know. Like, you gotta... I don't know. It's hard to get someone to watch this movie without telling them why yeah. it's... That's that's what I was like, gonna say. I hate... I don't want to spoil it for people, but at the same time, it's like, how am I gonna talk them into watching a fucking romantic, yeah. sappy, dumbass movie with fucking the dude from Twilight in it and Claire? I was gonna say, yeah, if you've landed this far and you've never seen it, you probably don't need to. I guess I would recommend it to people that have no idea what it's about, that hasn't had the ending spoiled, and has to listen to this episode, maybe see it once, but those people are never going to hear this, so. Mm-hmm. Um, All right. You want to get into silver linings? Silver fucking linings. Uh, I got one. It's a little obvious. Um, okay. Where where are you at on the silver linings? Like, do you have a good one? Do you have uh, a joke jet one? Jet fuel can't melt Pierce Brosnan's love. <laughs> Apparently, it, it can. Gun. He didn't really seem to give a shit that his son died. Um, Fuck you! You're already poking holes in my silver lining. Mine is just going to be that surely this is going to have an impact and a positive effect on both of the dads, right? Because I would fucking hope so. We at the end of the movie, we see Pierce Brosnan start to turn, and he's already paying more attention to his children and i think that was if that hadn't happened then maybe this ending pushes him further away from his daughter you better keep the girl out of the fucking world trade center that, well now it's not an issue he's not having fuck they rebuilt it dustin yeah not it not anytime soon <laughs> um True. but i think it's definitely going to push pierce Brosnan closer to his daughter i don't know how about chris cooper because he's he never once had a redeeming moment but that ending shot of them two hugging maybe that's putting him on the right path to not being such a piece of shit maybe uh, maybe this just changed him either way i think both of them are gonna have at least, it's gonna have at least a momentary if nothing else positive effect on them and their relationship and with their children fucking claire though yeah watch her mom die and watch her boyfriend die yeah on a national level <laughs> like <Yeah>. international <laughs> um, um what do you got besides your joke one <laughs> Uh, that was fucking all I goddamn had to be honest. Really? Okay. Um, they. I think this is gonna change that got friend. Bin Laden. <laughs> I think this is oh, gonna change yeah, that hey, friend for being a piece of shit. Got a sick ass new tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, nothing wrong. Some ink. Yeah. I think um, that definitely changed his perspective. He seemed like less of a. I mean, it was only one shot, but he seemed... Just one shot. Like, oh, yeah, he really seems less of a... Yeah, he came, he came back around. He was not just a sexist piece of shit. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's all that's I got. All, that's all. I have nothing. <laughs> all right. Well, I, got, I got a few more 9-11 jokes, and that's it. Let's, let's move on to uh, alternatives, movies we can watch after Remember Me to get that sour taste out of our mouth. Uh, Ooh, okay. what, what do you got? Um... I'm going with another, um, because again, we both agreed Pierce Brosnan was one of the better parts of this movie. I agree. So I'm going with a great film that Pierce Brosnan is featured in, Mm -hmm. Mrs. Doubtfire. (laughs) Okay. If you didn't get enough Pierce Brosnan here, you can get it there. I got you. Also, for anyone that wants to have a good laugh, please look up Mrs. Doubtfire as a horror film. Yeah, it's pretty funny. There is someone cut a trailer together, and it's fucking amazing <laughs> um i'm also gonna go with a romantic movie like remember me is supposed to be okay that deals with death but i think it deals with it in a much more upbeat kind of manner uh i'm going with one of my favorite I- romantic movies uh p.s i love you deals, okay I'll you deal you with one. death up front but it's kind of like an uplifting kind of death because of how it changes the character throughout the whole movie for some reason, I thought you were going to say Idle Hands, <laughs> and no. I'm recommending that one. I don't, like, not necessarily as a pick-me-up movie. Yeah. Actually, yeah, a pick-me-up movie, but just, y'all need to see that movie. Idle Hands yeah. is a fucking 90s classic. <laughs> God, um, that, oh, it's so good. All right, well, that is uh, Remember Seth Me. Green, fucking Devin Sawa, like, 
Ah. Oh. <laughs> That's Remember Great. Me from 2010. Jessica fucking Alba's in that movie. Let's, uh... Anyway. Let's wrap it up here. So if you haven't already, wherever you're listening to us right now, please subscribe if you wouldn't mind. We're on uh, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and YouTube. If you haven't already, please also leave us a rating. We really appreciate that. That helps other people find us a little easier. Um, we're on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Silver Linings Playlist. Instagram is the same. Twitter is TSLP Podcast. Uh, you can follow us there. We always follow back, and we always post clues for upcoming episodes as well as some other interesting things um and dude y'all are getting good at guessing these too yeah i feel like rarely ever do i get one out that no one's gotten (laughs) like i'm not gonna lie someone like even when we throw out like a weird movie kind of like this one yeah someone got it someone got it and i was like fucking what really (laughs) um yeah, if you haven't already, you can also go to reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. You can uh, enter to win some free stuff from us for the official discussion thread using that contest code we gave you. You can leave us some feedback on how we can improve the show. You can give us a suggestion for a movie to cover. Uh, or you can just talk about movies or whatever with us and your uh, fellow peers. So whatever you want to do, you can do it there. Uh, Mally, clue for our penultimate season two episode. What are we talking about next week? Well, all I'm going to say is not since Hollow Notes has there been such a team. <laughs> okay. That's going to be a good one. And it's going to be interesting because next week, uh, as I mentioned, it's our second to last episode <laughs> for the season. We're going to find out what movie we're talking about in our finale uh, between choices of Star Wars The Last Jedi and The Shining. If you haven't already, you can easily vote in that poll to t- figure out which movie it we is, want to talk it's about. It's getting close. It's very too. close. In fact, Star Wars I'm is really, coming back I'm up. I'm really pulling. Yeah. Uh, you can go right now either to our Reddit and see the top post or Facebook and see our pinned post there. Um, you can vote there. There's no signing up. You don't have to enter email or anything. You literally just click a button and you can vote whether we're covering The Shining or The Last Jedi. We will announce the winner of the contest next week. So we'll know what we're covering the last episode, give you plenty of time to rewatch it and join us in on that one. It's going to be interesting. Uh, We're also going to do a season two wrap up on that final episode. Talk about some things uh, before we go on hiatus. So yeah, Mally, uh, anything else you want to talk about before we wrap it up for this episode? Um, I got nothing. I mean, I can make some more insensitive jokes, but I think I've done my share. We'll leave those to the imagination. Uh, I'm sick of talking about made-up things anyway. But in all seriousness, (laughs) September 11th, tomorrow, 17 years. Pretty pretty crazy it's been that long. Um, Yeah. yeah, And this, I would not... 12. Yeah, I would not say this is a movie to rewatch on that time, but... Yeah, um, not a good remembrance film, which is ironic. No, but uh, yeah, respect to all the victims uh, and people affected by that day. Um, I just, you know, the reason we did this movie this time wasn't necessarily to be a joke, but it was, you know, it's about 9-11. Why not do it on 9-11 or as close to it as possible? So, ah, fuck, we should have done that George Bush movie. Ooh, W? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, All right. Well, that's all I got to. So until next week, as always, never never forget. forget. Nice. (laughs) 